What's going on guys? Welcome back. In our last video, we went over how to build shapes with SwiftUI. In this video, we're going to be going over how to add images to our applications in SwiftUI. So really quickly, guys, I want to clean up our directory just a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and create two folders to put these two files in. So we're going to go ahead and hit Command Shift N twice. Uh, let's actually do it three times because we also need a folder for today's module. So I'm going to call this first one app. So app. And then we're just going to take this guy and put this up there. And then this one, I'm going to call root. And we're going to put our content view up here. And this is just so that we can easily go to our root folder and modify the root view of our application. And then this third guy here is going to be our images module. And I'm going to put this right below shapes. So let's go ahead and go to our images folder guys and create a new file, Swift UI view, and we're gonna call this images module. So I'm just gonna get straight to it. Um, very similar to how we can create a text component, we can also create an image component. So if we go and just replace this with image, and you guys open up a parenthesis, you're gonna see a couple different initialization options. We're gonna be starting off with this one called system name, guys. So we can pass in a simple string. So I'm gonna do, for example, heart. And you guys will notice that a heart image shows up there. I can also say something like heart.fill and a filled in heart will show up there. So you guys may be, may be asking, where do these images come from? Well, these are a bunch of stock images that we get from Xcode and we can see all of those images in an app called SF Symbols, guys. So if you go to Google and type in SF Symbols and click on this first link on the Apple developer page, you guys will notice that there is this app here that lists a bunch of all of the images that we get access to right out of the box with Xcode. And they are constantly improving this, uh, this application here. You get like animations with all these images now and a lot of them are just so, so cool. And I'm gonna show you guys what the app looks like as well. So I'm gonna pull the app up here. And this just gives you this big sort of database of all the images we get access to. So you guys will notice there's a bunch of categories on the right and you can search for anything. So for example, the one we just did was heart and heart.fill. So then you can say heart.circle, heart.square, all of that good stuff. So you guys can play around with this a little bit. Uh, but the big takeaway here is that this is how we access those images. We have to use this system name uh, constructor or initialization for our image and then we just pass in a string. So I could also say heart.square and you guys will notice that it shows up with a little heart inside of a square and I could also say like heart.circle.fill and it fills in the circle for me. So that's really, really cool. Um, but anyway guys, now I want us to go over how we can customize these images, okay? So first off, we get the standard stuff like foreground color um, on images as well. So I can modify this image to have any color that I want. So you guys will notice that turns it into like a pink circle. And I could also set a font attribute on an image, guys. So that's something unique to uh, the system images, I believe. I can go here and say dot font and then say like dot large title. And you guys will notice it'll make that just a little bit bigger. And then I can further customize the scale of my image by setting dot image scale to maybe dot large and it'll make it even bigger. And then I could also say dot small, it'll make it smaller. And you know, that's pretty limiting. Um, as you guys might imagine, we also get a access to a frame on our image. So let me just go ahead and comment those out. And let's see what happens if I apply a frame to my image. So I could say width and height of maybe uh, 100 by 100. And something interesting is that you guys will notice that nothing actually changes. So uh, I want us to dive a little deeper into this. Guys, go into your canvas and down at the bottom here, you'll see a play button and then this little uh, mouse pointer with a square around it. Go ahead and hit that. And guys, you'll notice that this sort of highlights this view for us, right? So if I click like on this image, it'll highlight the box that the, uh, or the frame of this image. So this is the actual size of the frame of this image. You guys notice that the image simply isn't filling out that frame. So I could change this to 200 by 200, and you guys will notice that box gets a lot bigger. But 
ideally what we would want is to have the image actually fill out the frame of this entire box. So to do that, guys, we have to add this modifier on the image called dot resizable. So this is a modifier that specifies that, hey, this image is going to be able to resize to fit whatever frame that we specify on it, right? So if we say that, we'll notice that it fills out that entire box now. And whatever I change my frame to, the image will scale to fit that particular frame. You guys would have noticed that if I remove this frame, it's gonna make it super, super massive because it's resizing to fit the entire screen now, right? So what we wanna do here is just specify the frame and uh, that we want that image to fill and say dot resizable so that it adjusts to that frame. And once again, guys, if I were to comment this out, the image would go back to its original size. So if you want it to fill the frame, you specify that you want it to be resizable. Okay, so that's really cool, right? That's a nice little introduction to how to add images to our application. But these are all system images, right? And these are pretty limited to like icons and stuff like that. So how do we add our own custom images to our application here? Well, what we're gonna wanna do is go to our assets folder. And this is where we can drag and drop actual files into our Xcode project, like images, colors, videos, and all of that good stuff. So I'm gonna go and bring up my finder, guys. And I have this folder where I have a bunch of Formula One drivers. And I am going to go and just highlight all of these from finder and drag and drop them into my application. So now you guys will notice I have a bunch of images of F1 drivers inside of my app. Literally all you guys have to do is go and download some images from the internet or maybe from your device, get them onto your computer and you can drag and drop them over into your assets folder. So now guys, we can actually dra uh, use those images inside of our project. So let me go ahead and comment this out right here and create another image. And we're just gonna do a string as the initialization parameter for this guy. We're not gonna use the system name property. Once again, this will pull images from the SF symbols application or database of images. This is how we use our own custom images. So here, what I'm gonna say is pass in Lewis dash Hamilton. So uh, we'll talk about the image sizing in a little bit, guys. I just want to make sure that we understand here that the image name you pass in has to match up directly with what it says in the assets folder. So you guys were to notice if I were to like just even change this to a capital L with Lewis Hamilton and I go back here, that nothing is gonna show up, right? And that's because your app goes and looks for this image file name in the assets folder and it says, hey, I can't find that. But if you guys were to change this back to capital L, everything would be good to go. So you just make sure that your image names match up exactly with what you have here. And if you guys want to rename them, you just highlight it and do a long mouse click on it. And when you let go, it'll allow you to rename the file. So guys, all of these properties uh, apply to this image here as well. So we can say dot resizable. And you guys will notice that changes the size of the image to fit the screen. So the reason it was all big and blown up before was because this is a really large image file. So before we stated that we wanted it to be resizable, it was using the natural size of the image. That could be, you know, this image might be for an iPad or for a super large computer screen or for a TV screen. It, it's a really large image file in this case. Some images are large, some are small. In this case, this one was really large. So we need to say resizable so that it will stretch to fit the particular frame that it exists within, right? And then the same way I did up here, I can specify the frame of this image. So we can go here and just copy and paste that line of code for our frame. And you guys will notice that this will shrink my image down to a 100 by 100 image. So, you know, you can mess around with the frame here, say 300 by 200, stuff like that, right? And you guys will notice that it's like slightly off in terms of its aspect ratio, right? So anytime you modify the image to have a frame that doesn't line up with its original aspect sizing or its aspect ratio, it's gonna make the image look a little bit weird, right? So what we can do to solve that, guys, is before the frame modifier, we can say dot scaled to fit or scale to fill. So let's say scale to fill. And you guys will notice 
that it resizes my image to fit the, the or fill the original aspect ratio or size, right? But it expanded beyond my frame. So if we go back and select this guy right here, we can see that the frame of my image is this box right here. But because we said scale to fill, it readjusted the image to fit its original aspect ratio and caused it to bleed outside of our frame bounds. So alternatively, you could say scale to fit, and it will re sort of structure your image to fit the original aspect ratio and fit it within that frame. But you guys notice that it doesn't fill out the entire frame. So um, there's a couple, there's a lot of different ways you can play around with images here, guys. And once again, this is just an introduction to this stuff. But let me show you how to make the image have that nice filled ratio and clip it to that particular uh, frame size. So underneath the dot frame, you can say dot clipped, and it's gonna clip the image to fit the size of that frame, which is really cool, right? So that's how you can solve that issue there. And guys, in this situation, the order of our modifiers is important. So for example, if I went and uh, removed this guy and maybe said clipped here, let's see what that does. You guys notice that it doesn't do anything, right? And that's because we need to specify the frame first and then clip it after that frame has been set. So if I go here and say clipped, then that will take effect. But we'll go more into detail on the ordering of modifiers a little bit later. I don't wanna bog you guys down with too much stuff. That can get a little confusing. We'll get more practice with that a little bit later on in the course. Um, something else I wanna cover really quickly is clip shapes. So just the same way we can say dot clipped, I can give this a clip shape of a circle. And you guys will notice that this gives me this really awesome like sort of circular image here. And if I uh, adjust my circle to have even dimensions, then everything looks just fine, right? Um, this was a little off because we had a longer width than we did height. So that was causing some of the, the aspect ratio stuff to, th to get thrown off. But you know, with the circle, you're almost, with a perfect circle, you need the width and height to be the same every time. So now the image looks just fine, right? And we could even remove this scale to fill guy now and nothing will change, right? Because everything fits the frame as it should based on the image's original aspect ratio. Um, so that's uh, just a quick tutorial on images, guys. I know that was a lot of information um, and you guys can play around with, uh, you know, some of the aspect ratio and the resizing and all that stuff as you see fit. Uh, I'm gonna keep reiterating the fact that all of this that we're doing is just meant to be an introduction into these concepts. Like right now, you guys know how to put an image on a screen which was the goal of this video. And we can apply some customization to it with like the foreground colors and the frames and the clip shapes and all that stuff, which is gives us enough to potentially do something like this with this like threads app, right? Where you guys would now know how to do something like this, apply an image and then give it a clip shape and apply a frame to that image, right? So this is like really small. So for example, to get it to look more like that, we could maybe make this like 80 by 80. And that gives you guys more of an accurate representation of how that might look in an actual application. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. In the next one, we are going to be getting into a much more exciting tutorial with the use of stacks in SwiftUI. One of the most important fundamental concepts for building user interfaces with SwiftUI is stacks. And that's what we're going to be covering in the next module. So get excited for that. We will see you there. Peace.